Hi dear friends, this is Dima, the tutor. In this video, uh, let's do a couple of practice tasks for Duolingo English test. Namely, uh, here we deal with uh, Duolingo reading. I mean, uh, let's call it classic reading, or because at the moment we have um, a new section called Duolingo interactive reading. It's another kettle of water here. But this one is just a classic thing where we input letters to complete the words and to complete the, the story. Personally, I think that that uh, second task, interactive reading, is a bit simpler than this one. Why I think so? Because there you have a multiple choice, you see? You have uh, several options, let's uh, say five uh, words, yeah? Among which you choose. So you are limited in a choice, which is very nice. Here, with these letters, you are unlimited. And uh, <laughs> despite this freedom, it adds to the complexity of this task. However, we do not, let's say, acquiesce to our fate <laughs> and try to fight till the end yeah, with this. So let's do a couple of these uh, tasks. I will put the letters here and philosophize a bit. And you will think just simultaneously. Uh, to this, like, what would you put here? So this is one of the texts uh, which that was already met by guys uh, at uh, real dealingos, past dealingos. So you're dealing with some real thing, not a fake one, not a mock one. Okay, let's read. And uh, yeah, uh, the authors of this resource they claim that it is of a medium level. I think that it's mostly even of an easy level, not a medium. Because you will see now why. Jane Fonda, born December 21, 1937, is an American actress, writer, political activist, and former fashion model. Okay. Luckily, in this first sentence, we clearly see that the story will be about Jane Fonda, so about this actress. I always say, so it's very important, if you feel that you have understood the gist of the story from the first sentence, you're lucky. Because sometimes during they provide you with such sentences, at the beginning and at the, at the end that you just you don't understand uh, the meaning the message especially it concerns texts about philosophy sociology or something like that some mathematical theories they can provide you with such a beauty but here luckily we understand that it will be about peaceful jane fond and nothing else she then i'm looking at this sentence i try to catch uh, to detect the the edges so the front edge the back edge, yes, front end, back end, so, so uh, the ends of the sentence. Luckily, the sentence is short, very nice, because sometimes at Duolingo you have sentence from here to here. No, no, this is very short. Now, I'm searching for this clause, let's say the core. I'm searching for the core, and the core is the subject and the predicate. If you have a long sentence, you can have two or three cores, uh, each of which have a subject and a predicate, without the subject and the predicate, it's impossible to have a normal sentence in English. In speaking, yes, you can have, for instance, if you shout out, uh, good, yeah, yeah, but in writing, it's rarely the case, rarely the case. So, uh, where is our subject and predicate? I clearly see that she, most probably, is the subject. Okay, very good, so I have to find the predicate. So, she is, yeah, some guys can put here in, but this in, it's not correct, because we need a predicate. And this is, is the linking element, auxiliary element of the predicate. She is the daughter, yeah? If you see D-A-U-G, as I read it in my Latin manner, it is asking for the completion of the word daughter. I think that you agree with me, and it's a simple case here. Oi, I'm sorry. Oi. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. She is the daughter. Of Henry Fonda. So, one of the simplest sentences I have ever read in my life. Who probably was, yeah? Because you understand that the father of Jane Fonda, he, most probably, he's already late. He passed away. So, in this case, we have to put this in past tense. Who was an ac... I think you agree with me that here we have actor. Because ac... And three more letters. What else can we conjure up? I don't know. Uh, she, uh, again, you see, she is the subject. Probably is. Let's put it here. We can return in case of necessity. She is the sister. You see uh, here they discuss family relations. So, so, so sister. 
of Peter Fonda. This this place asks for either R or and. Yeah, I will put here R. Oh, I'm sorry, and. <laughs> It's a problem not to be tired to do and aunt or aunt as you like it of Bridget Fonda. Yeah, so you see, uh, some guys they will put here are, but then I ask them why did you do that? What's the meaning? What's the sense of I don't know, I just thought that it is R. So, but you try please to define at least the, the, the environment, at least the context. You think please a little bit, don't print it like a row, but it's uh, she is the sister of Peter Fonda and the aunt of uh, Bridget Fonda, both of whom. For me, it's very easy to find out because both of whom, what else can you put here? I don't know. Both of whom are actors. So, again, this is one of the simplest texts I have ever met uh, at Duolingo. If you meet such a text at the beginning of a test, it's okay. Feel lucky and feel happy and complete it and proceed. Uh, yeah, but if you meet such a text at the end of the test, at the end, at least in the second part, you know, guys, it can be an indicator that the system sees that you are yet a bit far from advanced level, and they give you this easy level because um, because you have proved in the previous sections that you are not capable of doing more. So it's not a very positive sign. However, you know, we let's disregard those signs, both positive and negative. We just do our job. We are psychologically ready to do it, and we will do it, cause. If you get frustrated at every mark or sign or whatever it can be at Duolingo, then psychologically you will be defeated just at the outset of the test. It's not a good idea. Yeah? So we just do our job and ignore those indicators. Okay, let's uh, click to here, submit. We will check. Perfect. You see, <laughs> we have done this. Yes, very nice. Okay, let's go to the second text for today. So, uh, they say that it is hard level. Okay, we will see now. Mm, I mostly like think, I tend to believe that it's a medium level, not a hard one. But, okay, let it be. So, as usual, we look attentively at the first sentence. Let's read it. This phrase is often used to describe traditional teaching. Ah, you see teaching. So, most probably, our text will be about teaching, which is very nice. Because we can define the topic, the message of this text. We can also have a look at the last one. This method is suitable where the trainer wishes to impart theoretical knowledge to the whole group of learners. Okay, this is about teaching. Very good. At least my brain will uh, anticipate, let's say, some words related to teaching here, to didactical process. Okay, let's go on. So, this sentence, yes, we define the edges, the boundaries of this sentence. Where they are? La 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 la. They are here. Topic, you see? Okay. A medium-sized sentence, and the second one is also a medium-sized sentence. Okay, uh, so let's read the pick. You know, guys, that probably if you have pick, then 99% it will be something related to picture. Yeah, picture. Uh, yeah, the picture. Why? Because in Latin, I don't remember exactly the spelling of this root, but picked mostly it's pick something like that. It will be something related to images. The picture it, uh, here we have an interesting phrasal verb, which you need to know already. I mean that if you don't know it, you have some problem. If you know it, you are happy that you demonstrate the power, your linguistic prowess. Okay, the picture it conjures up. I don't know how to describe to you how I came to such a conclusion. Conjures up. Because conj, again, this root prompts me that it will be something about conjure, conjure, you see, nothing else uh, matches this pattern, this root, and then the, some, some flexion, conj, what else can be, conjunction, but, you know, conjunction, conjunct, conjunct, no, it's nothing like that. Or also, also, you know, the picture, it, you see, it, so we, we should have at the end, s, obligatory, because it's third person singular, S. So we have only three uh, letters here. So it can be only related to conjure. And also I know the phrasal verb conjures up, like makes, draws, uh, creates, something like that. The picture it conjures up, <laughs> here again, I will put is, a lot of guys would put in, like automatically and go on, but please be attentive where you have your clause. Yes, the core, where is the core? Uh, the picture, this is the subject. And then we begin our predicate, and this is, and is an auxiliary element of the predicate, is of the, oi, I'm sorry, 
is of the trainer in front of I think you understand it without me in front of yeah such a child is beaten shabby phrase in front of something like opposite something is of the trainer in front of the group yeah grr most probably if we mean if we mean people it will be group uh, especially we are thinking about some teaching process so we have a teacher and we have a group uh, the group of here they uh, want to catch you like maybe you will forget that not only you can say uh, students but also you can say learners uh, learners mm. now we have a comma and we have a classic a classic pattern like the picture is, is la, la 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 comma doing what you see this is an uh, addition or expansion of the classic phrase with the ing structure giving like doing what giving something yeah this is a classic very beautiful structure uh, yes you, you should be ready to realize that uh, it's very often used in the English language uh, you firstly you say what I do comma and then probably you add something I like I am walking down the street comma waving my hands yes so this ing structure is very very common after commas but of course not not 100 percent but giving a talk on some topic yeah I hope you understand some because what else can go there giving a talk on some topic Nowadays, the chalk element, uh -huh, you see they start talking about chalk, it means that soon we will discuss some probably some inscriptions on the board and maybe the types of boards. I see already that we have flip chart here, whiteboard, so chalk, board, this segment of teaching. Nowadays, the chalk element, again, is, not in, is more, you see, like to, mm -hmm, here, to be 100%, because why? To buy no 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 after two and here we have a so we can only have a verb be to be a more likely element is more likely to be a oi uh, to be a whiteboard i just know i just know what whiteboards so nothing special uh flip chart it's a typical uh, ling vocabulary uh, thing nothing mental here flip chart either you know flip chart or you don't know if you don't know you have a problem and you cannot guess because you just have to know this word if whiteboard you can guess somehow blackboard whiteboard yes some other board <laughs> flip chart you just have to know flip chart it means that uh, special device is usually standing on some on some legs yeah and it has several large white pieces of paper which you can flip and so present your ideas on them so on flip chart or a powerpoint la 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 presentation so you understand that here will be some adjective or something adjective uh, yeah some attribute so if you have an attribute most probably we will have here either an adjective or some noun in the form of an, in the function of an adjective something like that so you see compute you understand that it will be about computers computers computer no because we have several white spaces here so computerized computerized mind you i put here z uh, you know s and z are such it's such a naughty you know like the cantankerous and i don't know even not an evil thing in the english language because british and american spelling if you put here s i give you a guarantee that the system will show you that you should put here z if you put somewhere z they will show you that uh, you should have put here s it's always so don't worry about it both variants are possible in most words most let's say 95 percent there are some words where you have exactly to put s or z and no other way but a lot of them are like this s or z computerized presentation this method is suitable where the trainer wishes to impart theoretical knowledge to the whole group of learners <laughs> okay let's click the submit yeah you see as i have told you they are not happy with my z and it's their business yeah computerized everything else is fine you see uh, so uh, which are the most challenging combinations from this text? I'm sure conjure up. If you know it, good. If you don't know it, please remember it. Uh, conjure up means to make, to produce, to come up with something. It can be, it can relate both to your mind and to your like hand. So we can conjure up something mentally or manually, 
what else learn a group nothing given talk some la 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 flip chart flip chart is just a term presentation device uh, computerized they give you a special word form in order to mislead you probably that you start thinking here and lose your time why it relates to computers but why is it so long yeah because it's such a form uh, a verb let's say a verbal uh, form stemming from the verb computerized and the third form computerized serving as an attribute to presentation okay guys i think you have some idea remember please that um, uh, all these t uh, text i take from some past real duolingos so you are now feeling the level feeling the nature of duolingo which is also very good if you need some professional assistance uh, for getting ready to duolingo please you're welcome to contact me the uh, my contacts are in the description to this video i will be happy to assist you yeah as a tutor i cost money however i give you a serious result uh, you can read it like in the testimonials of some of my students on the website so i can really help okay practice practice and uh, practice again uh, this will make you more uh, this will make you more used to this duolingo specific nature yeah it's very very important that when you go to the real test you feel at home okay guys i wish you success and see you in our next video